let's talk about this. A comment received from the very famous Tom Sawyer. Here's what he had to say on a video I made called Lucky Norwood Stages for Each Age, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. His comment is this, quote, I wish I would never ever have a son. I want daughters because girls don't go bald. They do, but not, but only a few because of a hormonal imbalance, end quote. Let's explore that. This comment of someone wishing that they never had a son to pass on that curse of that male pattern baldness gene. If, I, if you have only daughters, at least they don't have to deal with male pattern baldness. So let's address that. My immediate thought is that's because they got their own issues that they're going to have to deal with. But even aside from that, and even aside from the fact that yes, some women do suffer uh, hair loss, but we're talking about male pattern baldness. We're talking about this perceived cursed gene that, that has survived survival of the fittest uh, throughout the existence of mankind. It, it hasn't been weeded out. So people continue to mate with this gene. Women continue to mate with men who have this gene. But this concept of, well, at least if you have daughters, you're not cursing your children with this male pattern baldness gene. So let's explore that. Here's what my response to that is. So my mom, so I have a second YouTube channel. It's called Family Friendly Daddy Blog. I know it's random, but I'm a blogger and that's the name of my blog. So I just carried over the name to kind of extend the brand name. And in that second YouTube channel, Family Friendly Daddy Blog, I know it's random, but in that, uh, what I regularly talk about and mainly focus on is never hair loss, but instead DNA test results. That's one of the things I talk about. People like listening and watching me talk about that a lot. So I do. And one of the things I learned from that, so everyone in my family took a DNA test. And when my mom took hers, she was able to upload her results and uh, to a certain site and it was able to show her uh, basically what kind of medical conditions, medical history, medical predictions about her based on her DNA. And what it showed my mother is that she is a carrier of, you guessed it, male pattern baldness. Now, not in any way is that to say that you look at my mom and you're like, oh yeah, I can totally tell she has male pattern. No, my mother does not have male pattern baldness, but she does carry the gene for it. Meaning that any male pattern baldness that I'm experiencing didn't even necessarily come from my father. In theory, it may have just came from my mother and not my dad at all. Because what's something I'm already seeing with my balding process is it's different than my dad's. It's similar, but it's different. Mine seems to be more about diffuse thinning, a balding spot starting to happen here. Whereas my dad's, my dad's hair loss seemed to be much more predictable nor one, two, three, and it happened a little bit younger to him than it's happening to me. But I think what's gonna happen is the fuse thinning is gonna get me before before the typical male pattern baldness. So basically the the diffuse thinning is gonna overwrite the Norwood system for me if it progresses. That's my view on it. Either way, my mother definitely passed on the male pattern baldness gene to me. So so, so this concept of you don't want to have sons because, well, it doesn't matter. Forget you for a minute. Forget about you passing on genes. Think about that woman you're mating with. We've got to determine if she is carrying the male pattern baldness gene. And it's not necessarily as easy as simply looking at her father and her grandfather and her brothers because that male pattern baldness gene could easily be in hiding. Let me give you a perfect example. I know it's hard to imagine looking at me every day and, and thinking this, Knowing if you've seen my wife in our videos, she shows up from time to time. She also has brown hair, brown eyes, and somewhat olive skin, right? But our children are not that way. Our children have blue eyes, lighter skin, born with blonde hair, and only as they get older does the hair even start to turn brown. And there's not a whole lot of people in our family that have blue eyes. I had a grandmother who did, my, my wife's father did, I think I have one aunt that does, but it's pretty rare because when it comes to DNA, you're looking at, between my wife and I, you're looking at Italian, Greek, Spanish, Spanish-Jewish, Middle Eastern, 
uh, like Hispanic, Mexican, there's all of those things in our DNA, yet our children both have bl blue eyes, which the chances of that happening with my wife and I, having one child with blue eyes is only a 12.5% chance, but both of our children have blue eyes. So it's pretty remarkable, but that's how genes work. The same thing with redheads. It's not like if you're a redhead, both of your parents are redhead. Well, there may be one or two, if anything, in your family, but it skips generations. And so it's the same thing with male pattern baldness. What can happen is this girl can have no visible male relatives with male pattern baldness, but she's still carrying the gene. So isn't this kind of fascinating? And this is, yes, why I have a second channel just to talk about DNA test results and genes. And here's kind of almost like a crossover video uh, on this hair loss channel. So the whole point is this. If you are fearing passing along this perceived curse, cursed male pattern baldness gene to sons, well, you, it very well could be that your wife will be passing it to your son instead, or that you may have all daughters and still pass that gene to them so that when they have sons, those sons would be bald. There's no escaping the bald gene. And that's, that's one of the new themes of 2019 that we're already running into, is when it comes to male pattern baldness, it's perceived as this disease, it's perceived as this curse. But look how strong it is. Look how persistent it is throughout time. And look at the way it does not prevent people from mating with each other despite it. That's my response. I think this is a very interesting conversation. So let's keep it going right here in the comments.